found he told my mother that he had volunteered and the roof fell, came off the roof. My mother was furious. She didn't want any of us to volunteer because they had, the government had set us to camp. We had no choice. <coughs> So she says, don't volunteer, but if they call you, you go. So we had no choice uh, for the branch of service. <coughs> After they had formed the infantry regiment, it was either the infantry or they had the military intelligence service. And my oldest brother did sign up for the intelligence service. Only my mother agreed to that because that meant we did see after basic training, four months of basic training, you basically went overseas into the war. But with the intelligence service, you went to school for another few months. The Japanese language school in Minnesota. So my mother allowed my oldest brother to sign up for the intelligence school, though he didn't know any Japanese. She passed the test for because they made the application from the internment center. They sent the paper, and so she filled out the question form. And that's how he got accepted. Uh, we didn't, uh, living on Northeast Corporate, we worked in a huge Japanese community. The basic Japanese community before the war was in Southwest Portland, and Northwest Portland. That's where all the business people and shops are. Uh, we lived in Northeast near uh, Lloyd Center, the Holiday District. And maybe there was a dozen families within a mile radius. So uh, most of our friends were Caucasian. In fact, uh, our baseball team was made up of three Japanese Caucasian, 15-year-old baseball team. Uh, we had no choice for the service. It was, when you signed up, it meant you were going to, as a replacement for the 442nd. And in 1944, I got uh, drafted. Mississippi, and I served in the military from August 44 to August 46. Two years I served. Uh, I happened to get sick in Italy in November of 45, so they sent me home early. Uh, <coughs> after the service, my parents had moved from Idaho to New York. Why? I don't know. They just felt that they had nothing important. They owned no property. And besides, property could only be bought by citizens. Our parents, as the aliens, could not buy property on the West Coast. There were all the property. The laws were that the you had to be a citizen. So what property some of the families had were bought in the name of their children. So, um, but we had no property. And so when I got discharged in 46, uh, my parents were in New York. So I ended up in New York from 1946 to 1992. So I spent more time back east than I have where I was born. Uh, I went to college there and I worked and got retired in 92. I met my wife in 63, wait a minute, 63. So we've been married too long, too long. <laughs> anyway, 
just to break the tension a little bit. What we do all of you? Um, is that all? Can you hear? Me? Uh, what if somebody came up to you and said, "You have to leave your home. What would you take? No laptops. <laughs> what would you take? You could only take." Two suitcases or whatever you could carry. <laughs> Just your shoes. <laughs> so it was, you know, really a problem. I mean, you want to take your clothes, you want to take your books, you want to take your photograph albums. So the best thing that we could do is whoever had some friends store some of the things with, you know, them in their garage, and then later on we were able to take them out. But uh, I don't know about you people. I think if the government said this is what you can carry, I imagine three quarters of you would have your laptops, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and then uh, Ace was telling you about his childhood in Portland. He went to school there. His younger brother was about 15 at the time, Paul. About the approximate. And when Paul was put into the camp, uh, do you, all of you know where that expo is? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they were all put in the camp there with only sheets to divide the kids. So Paul had a friend named Walter, and Walter said, yeah, how come Paul had to go? And he said he decided to go visit him. So they lived in Portland, and Walter got on his bicycle, and he pedaled all the way to the expo, and he got there, and what did he see? Guards with machine guns. And they said, what are you doing here, kid? And he said, well, I came to see my friend Paul Hiromora. He says, well, get out. He says, you're not welcome. Go. And he says, well, we'll have to shoot you if you're ready. Well, what, how, what do you think of a 15-year-old kid would think about something like this? This is America. Ah, you know. And so he said he never forgot that. He said. Here, he only wanted to see his friend and say, you know, you need anything. And the guards up there on the towers were pointing their machine guns at him. And he said, this is America. <laughs> but that's it. You know, you're good and bad. But anyone have questions that they'd like to ask? What did we do in camp What did I do in camp before? No, like, what would you do to fill your time? And then in camp. camp. Oh, in camp, uh, the Japanese are very education-minded, so right away they set up schools. And even if they didn't have the certified teachers, anyone who was a college-educated person, like my brother, could teach the lower children. And my brother was a very handsome young man. But, so he was teaching, like, the fourth grade, my younger brother's class, and in the evening, they a bunch of girls would come up and they'd say, uh, is Tom home? And my little brother would say, no, oh, he's here, why, what do you want? Well, we want to know what our homework is for tomorrow. And meantime, they'd be looking around. <laughs> what were they looking for? They're looking for their teacher, my brother. <laughs> All the young girls had a crush on them. And so they'd come and they'd say, what's the homework for tomorrow? <laughs> so things on the inside are not too much different from the outside. You know? Uh, uh, it was very strange that among the things that I had to leave behind were photograph albums. And I don't really know how and where, but I have managed to have my photograph albums. And I said, well, thank heaven for friends. I mean, this is when you really needed friends to help you, you know, store your things and to help you get, send them to you later on. Uh, as far as what we did in camp, Uh, well, you know, nobody tried to escape from camp, but there were some few older Japanese men who maybe didn't understand English too much, and they'd go wandering around looking for wood to carve, and the soldiers would say, get back in and point their guns at them, and, you know, well, what am I doing, you know? In fact, I think there was one older man who accidentally shot, you know, but it's, uh, especially in Arizona,